What is him? Javier. Yeah, nice to, to have you here in Miami for a change. Oh, it's gorgeous <laughs> to be here, I know. We don't get down here nearly enough. I know, exactly. Especially this time of the year with this beautiful weather. I know, it's gorgeous. I, Back in yeah. New Jersey, it was all rain and sleet and everything else. It's nice to come to sunshine. I know. So here, I, we're here in, in South Beach and um, we have a pretty unique opportunity to drive the new X90 T8. But this is the plug-in hybrid, This is right? the plug-in hybrid, right. So the T8 is our twin engine. Yeah. And so it gets up to 400 horsepower by combining the gas engine with, with the electric motor in the rear. So let's go, let's go for a little drive and uh, yep. while we talk, did I turn it on? Yeah, yeah. It, we're on, you just need to shift into, yep, there That's you go. That's the thing, since it's plugging it's, hybrid. It's quiet, it's, I know. <laughs> I get, it's a, lot of, a lot of people do that. Yeah. Not quite sure. That's why they had to add the little message when you first turn it on. A little message that comes that says, car is active. Okay. Uh, to kind of remind people. So this is based obviously on the very, very, Successful, and I cannot say it very enough, I guess. Very successful <laughs> XC9, new XC90, right? Yes, so um, the XC90 has been the first car in our scalable product architecture, and, and really has been the, the car that shows our new design philosophy. And the car has been very, very well received. We've been very lucky to receive a lot of honors for it, and uh, the customers really seem to love it as well. So the T6 was with the gas engine that came out in August. This is the T8, the twin engine, which started um, uh, being released to customers just in January, so okay. uh, relatively relatively soon. And then we have the R design version, which is mechanically the same as the as the T6, but has a, a different flavor to the look and feel. So this being a plug-in hybrid, um, I noticed that pretty much the cabin is exactly the same. Yes. I mean, because I understand the battery is under here. That's right. So that was a, one of the big challenges in, in this. And one of the great things about the new uh, product platform, the new product architecture, is that we put the battery in the center tunnel. And it, we get a lot of benefits from that. Not only yeah. do we get the benefit of not giving up any interior space compared to the regular gas which, engines. Which that happens with other cars that, that apply the hybrid technology into the regular car and they sacrifice a lot of space right. in most cases. And so that's what's interesting about this platform. It was built from the ground up for electrification. So okay. it was built around electrification to plan for that. And then also from a safety standpoint, by having the battery pack here in the center, center tunnel, uh, it is the safest place for it to be. Um, you don't have batteries being pushed into people. Okay. Um, you don't have the you don't have as, as much worry about the batteries being impacted from a crash because of its center yeah, and, exactly. and low gravity. I mean, and Volvo is also known for so much safety. Yes. I mean, even you are now you have a pledge for that 2020 plan that nobody will yep, get it's, killed or it's, seriously injured in a Volvo car. That's pretty amazing. That's right. I mean, it's our vision. We started it uh, back in about 2008, where we said our vision is that no one should be killed or seriously injured in a new Volvo by the year 2020. And so, that's more than just marketing speak. That has really been the core of all of the engineering and design decisions that we've made over the last several years with these yeah. new cars. It's how can we integrate semi-autonomous technology? How can we integrate more boron steel? How can we design, redesign the seats to accept different forces so that the force is going into the seat and into the car rather than into your back or yeah. your spine? Um, so that is a very important uh, vision for Volvo and everything that you see really ties back to that vision. So let's talk a little bit more about the, this uh, plug-in hybrid technology because it's pretty amazing. I mean, we're driving the car, we can hardly hear anything from yep. the outside. I mean, because the cabin is very well isolated, but, but also because the, the powertrain is like, I mean, we might be going electric at the moment. Yeah, yes, we are. We're, we're in electric right now. And, and so there, there's a, a few different kind of variations of electric. You have the pure electric mode, yeah. which you will drive for about, depending on your drive style, about up to 14 miles. Um, on pure electric mode, and then you have the hybrid mode. And so in hybrid mode, and if you notice, you have not only D on your gear shifter, but you also yes. have B for battery. Okay. Uh, what that does is we have those two different modes that in that hybrid mode, the car can regenerate a lot of its own electricity. So when you're driving in hybrid mode, you'll have in certain instances where it will switch over to pure electric, and then you have other instances where the, the gas engine will Without will the in, driver doing anything. Without the driver doing anything. And so you kind of really are able to extend uh, how far you can go on kind of both fuel sources, which is, which is really nice. To take advantage of like the, the, the engine. What's the gas engine in this car? Uh, this is the T6 engine. So this is a turbocharged, supercharged uh, engine. The engine alone, 
uh, is at 306, or 302 horsepower in this, and okay. then another 87 horsepower in the in the electric motor. Um, so, but you really get kind of the best of both worlds uh, when you put it into hybrid mode. And then you also have uh, when you cruise on the highway. Um, and depending on what speed you're going, if you're at, at about 55 or lower, that's when you'll switch over to more of the battery power. Okay. So again, you kind of get those benefits of, you know, gas when you need that extra power and that, that extra performance, electricity when um, the situation calls for it, and then of course, you know, you have the two combined, you get up to the 400 horsepower. So uh, what, what are the... The range, I mean, the range and the, the, the mile per gallon of the MPGE because yeah. it's an electric. Yeah, so MPGE uh, is an important number. So the MPGE is about 52. Wow. Um, and so, of course, that is an equivalency number because yeah. they're looking at how much energy can come out of one gallon of gas versus, versus the electric. Um, on the regular gas motor, you're getting at about 25 uh, miles for highway, 20 for city, and about 22 combined. Which Just is pretty good. Very efficient for a seven yeah, seat. Because it's a, a, a very big car. I mean, like three rows of seating. Three rows uh, of seating, plenty of plenty of storage space. It was 84 cubic feet of, of space on the inside. And very flexible as well. The horns still work. <laughs> well, it wasn't us. <laughs> well, that's, that's how much they like the car. <laughs> Miami Beach is like known for a lot of different things and lately unfortunately traffic is one of them. yeah I mean it's getting really really busy but well, uh, you know it's interesting you talk about traffic you know our our approach to autonomous drive is this type of stop and go traffic is is one of the least pleasurable yeah. driving scenarios for most people and on average the American commute is 26 minutes in cities like Miami it's it's gonna be a lot longer know, so how distance how can we use autonomous drive technology to make this type of commute better. And so that's when we do things like pilot assist, where in this vehicle it will accelerate, decelerate, come to a complete stop, and steer itself at speeds under 30 miles per so hour. So this will be a perfect uh, scenario so, to so test it, right? Absolutely, yep. So, you know, when we get it, we get a pilot car as well, and we have to be able to see the lane markings. Okay. Um, you know, we'll be able pilot to... Pilot is a package, a technology package, or...? Uh... It's a te it's a, so it's part of the technology and convenience okay. packages in the car. So, and when you get adaptive cruise control, you get the pilot assist. Okay, so we're going to find a place to make a legal U-turn. Yes. And uh, we're going to try that. And in the meantime, let's talk about a little bit the design because on top of the technology and the safety features in this car, that's another aspect that really caught attention of a lot of people. Yes. So, I mean, what you, what I think you kind of realize here is, you know, this interior design, there's a lot of light. Yeah. So we have a very low belt line, what we call kind of the greenhouse, a lot of, a lot of glass. And because of the boron steel, we were able to make these pillars much thinner. And then, of course, we had developed a new laminate glass for the roof so that we're able to get as much of the panoramic um, sunroof as possible. So pretty much almost, I mean, the, all the, the first and second rows are completely are, under the, the panoramic sunroof. That's but right. But that gives also the impression to the people in the third row right. that, that the car is much bigger. The car is bigger, but also you, you get that light, and that's very important in Scandinavian design is you get that light. And of course, and then that's accented with lighter tones throughout the car. So we have the natural open pour wood, which is beautiful. You can really feel kind of the grain in it, which is unusual in cars. Yeah. Usually it's it's very heavily lacquered, and so it's very shiny. And then of course, all of it is natural leather. The, la the leather on the dash, um, the leather on the sides. It's very important that those materials be that true leather. And then you have the Napa leather, which is new to Volvo in the seats, which is that very buttery soft type of leather with the perforation so we can do the ventilated seats as well. So you have very fine materials because the, the design is not only should it be a calming yeah. place to be, you know, this is the the amount of, a, a, the only alone time that a lot of people get is is in their drive. So it should be a calming environment. It should be a recharging environment. Most comfortable environment. possible. Yes. And then the little details. I mean, there's details everywhere in this car, but this one I love. <laughs> yes, the, the, going back to the Swedish heritage with the with the little bit of the flag. You know, that was quite a uh, quite a debate within the company. Oh, you know, really? The Swedish culture is 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 not to brag, so Show to speak. Off, yeah. Um, but it was really encouraged by you know a lot of different people that said, "Hey, this car is embodying Scandinavian." Uh, philosophy in, in design and so there should be some some pride 
um, you know, with that, with, with putting the flag into the seat. So now here we can see also one of the other beautiful details is yes. this huge so the, screen. The census touchscreen. Yeah. So, you know, the what what was great about this, you know, we talked about the Scandinavian design as trying to make things as simple as possible. Uh, but also how can we design technology so that when new tech comes along we can have that be integrated into the vehicles. Yeah. I think CarPlay is a good example of that. And soon Android Auto. So with this technology, we don't need extra buttons and stuff like that. Through the software, yeah, we so can simple, update that technology. There's a lot of, of things that you can control there, but it's so simple design. Right, a very really simple guy. design. And it's all designed to be like a consumer tablet. So it was very important that it have the same type of motions, that it also has the same type of responsiveness that you would find on a consumer tablet. You know, the last thing that you want is to be yeah. you know, moving around and, and having any type of delay. But we developed this four tile system. So you, have, you always have the most important information that's available to you. And of course, when you integrate in Apple CarPlay, it takes up this bottom uh, tile. Okay. So that way it doesn't take over the entire screen. You can still use the rest you, of all You can still stuff. use the rest of everything else. But we refer to this as the, when, the whenever, and we refer to this as the now. So okay, yeah. everything that you need to, to, dr to okay. operate the vehicle will not only appear in the in the center dash, so or what we call the dim. Your, your attention to the right. front of the row and everything. But also the heads-up display. So you have your navigation information there, navigation information will show up in the heads-up display, speed information, all of that. So not only do you have that information there, but there's a lot of different ways of getting it. You can use it through the touch screen, but you can also use it through your voice, okay. for the voice controls. Yeah. You can also use it through the thumbs. In, in the uh, all the menus okay. are, are and there. Everything appears right there. It appears right there. So that was you know very important um, to make sure that there were multiple ways of getting to information, and there were multiple ways to see information to make it as least distracting as possible. Okay, so now we're here stuck in traffic. We are stuck in traffic. <laughs> it's green. But it's, yeah, it's green, moving. but we're not moving. We're going to so, see if we can get some some lane markings. So yeah, there they are. So in the center lane. So. That icon in the middle there, you see with the, the lanes, it's grayed right out right now. Yep, yeah. so we'll s wait for that to go white. And that's, does the car has to be at certain speed to, for the system to, um, to kick in? No, no, it'll only go up to 30 miles per hour, but okay. it will it now? We'll need to um, try with the arrow over, and uh, it says that it's currently unavailable. Oh, okay. That's because so, we're like not all yeah, we're, hardly we're, moving. Yeah, we're hardly moving. It's also a little, sometimes a little tough too, because with the power of the sun and that we have uh, the white concrete here against the white lines, it's something that um, we'll have to we'll have to keep an eye on. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, let's talk about another uh, huge project and very important, I think, that is happening with Volvo, which is pilot program. I understand to try the autonomous driving. Right? That's right. We'll be the first automaker to put 100 consumers in fully autonomous vehicles. It will start in 2017 and it will be in Sweden around Gothenburg, which is of course where the company is based. And so the goal there is to really identify how consumers, how people will use this technology on a regular basis. And it's very, very exciting. Um, because it's not like a lot of programs right now where it's engineers that are driving yeah. the cars and things like that, but actual consumers that would use it as part of their daily lives. Yeah, um, I mean, I've been I've been at test drives that are like closed circuits and like not on the regular streets. This is going to be regular streets. Inside. Yeah, it'll be. Yep, it'll be the primarily focused around the outer kind of highway in, in Gothenburg. Um, so there's a number of things that has been has been pre-mapped. Uh, using high-resolution mapping, but also we have some vehicle-to-infrastructure technology. Yeah, and that's the other point because there's, a, I mean, obviously that technology in the cars is already there, but infrastructure in most cities, in most countries, it's not there because like there's legislation and sure. so this must have been a great collaboration with it, the city. And it has. Right? Uh, you know, the local governments there have been have been great to collaborate with this because they see the the value as far as the the safety is concerned. Um, you know, what's also interesting too about vehicle to infrastructure communication is along with the Drive Me pilot project for the autonomous cars, we're also piloting a another project um, using our cloud where the vehicle can detect slippage on the road okay. and it can take that information and send it to the road officials to say there's a patch of ice here. Oh, really? They need to get out and, and salt that or, or wow. plow or whatever. And so what you hope to do is kind of stitch 
a picture of the road in, in given conditions and, and try to see, you know, where is it slipping, where is it slippery, and be able to, um, you know, put that together to warn other drivers. Okay, so Mo was going to help not only its own drivers, but everybody else on the Every, road. Everyone else, and so uh, we're really excited about that, and it kind of shows what the potential is for connected cars, as far as how it can be used not only for, of course, the driver inside the car, but also for benefiting other drivers as well. We gotta stop for a minute here. We're gonna try to get out of this really yeah. bad traffic, and we're gonna come back and try the automotive uh, systems in this. Uh, yep. X90 right now you could, T8. Yep. Huh? Right now, what? You, you could saying? try. You could try the adaptive. The adaptive cruise control okay. will will work. So we'll just arrow that over. And so we're at a stop now. So once we we get up, uh, twenty you speed. It, you just we just press the the center button to. Yep, so right now it was set it to 20 if you wanted to increase the this the ideal oh. speed that you would go. Well, we wish that we could yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're not going. Well, yeah, you're stopped, so you're not going anywhere. <laughs> going and then we'll, we'll shorten that. You can choose here the distance, the distance. between you so and the car like in front really, of you. Like really, really close, the, col the closest one, I guess. Yep. So now the system is set. It's set to go up to 20 miles. Yep. So do I have to... You have to engage. But engage? Then, yep. So it's looking for the car in front. So should I like press it so, again? No, you can let, let go of the gas. Oh, now it's braking on its own. Now it will brake on its own, yep. And if we were to stop completely with the car restart on its own too? It yep. will um, come to a complete stop. It'll stay at a complete stop for about 10 seconds. And oh, okay. then if there's no movement, then the system will, will shut off. But all you have to do is just tap the gas again and it will reset itself. So now we have done already a couple of not complete stops because we're like moving really right. really slowly so this is what you were referring to like yep this kind of traffic this kind of it's traffic not going anywhere but we can have a nice conversation we i still have to pay attention yes you do and and so in this scenario too you're still responsible for the steering yeah. what we have is in this kind of city environment what happens is the lane markings they stop at every intersection okay and so you know we talk about infrastructure you know that's one of these things is that pilot assist works best on a highway where you have kind of consistent lane markings and and going back and forth when you when you lose those lane markings in the intersections that's where adaptive cruise control really really kind of comes in best how does that work uh in like extreme weather like under snow and ice so the vehicle is, is smart enough to say in what conditions it, it will be able to operate and, and ones that it won't uh, for adaptive cruise control it's primarily using radar so radar can be used in almost any weather situation with the exception of if you have a lot of ice start yeah. to build up on the radar itself. But what we've done to prevent that, we had that in our previous cars, so we moved the radar from the uh, grill area to up here. Okay. So now the radar, in addition to the cameras and everything else, will um, be uh, cleared with the windshield wipers. And so that, that's in a very important point, yeah. Unfortunately, Adaptive cruise control isn't gonna. <laughs> yeah. it doesn't control. It doesn't control, yeah. it doesn't the, control other the other driver. Yeah. <laughs> so we tried the system. Uh, it actually works really well. I mean, it takes away a lot of the frustration, almost, right? Right. Like, yeah. A lot of that stop and start. That's yeah. often what people say is the most frustrating part of of this type of bumper to bumper traffic. And 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 still, I mean, even if I wasn't paying that much attention, the car will stop on its own, and I guess it will give me a, a an audio like an alarm or alert. Something. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, there's two aspects. When you're on the adaptive cruise control, the the car will will gently kind of come to a stop. If you're in kind of a regular environment, let's say a pedestrian was to walk yeah. through and you did nothing. Uh, then you would get the warning on the dash saying that something needs your attention. And if you still did nothing, then the car would come to uh, a very abrupt stop. Yeah. So the X90 was the first uh, vehicle in this, this new era for Volvo, as we yes. can say. But I understand you're going to be really busy for the next three, four years. Very, right? very busy. I mean, by by 2019, this will be the oldest vehicle. 2019? Yes. Um, wow. We're doing uh, the S90 sedan, which we had just released, which is our, our large sedan. We have the V90 wagon, which will be coming very soon. And then from there, we are completely redesigning and redeveloping all of our cars. And they're all going to be in this frame as far as, as design expression, but also in technology. So we're very excited about it. Well, and I, I'm sure all your fans here in the U.S. and around the world actually are really excited too, because uh, for a while uh, there, there, 
there weren't that many good news for Volvo, but now there's only only good news. Only good out. news so far, and that's the way that that's the way we want to keep it. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank we're gonna, you. I'm not gonna say enjoy the traffic, but we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna enjoy the traffic <laughs> 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 with adaptive cruise control. Exactly. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.